Oh, hey, look, it's that annoying kid that made that one video that other time about how everything sucks. Hello, Commander. I thought we'd go over the patch notes today, and uh, I know I haven't, I haven't really been posting too much critical feedback or um, stuff that, you know, could really benefit the, the game itself, and that's really because I haven't had much to, to bring up, you know. Uh, we will be going on later into the video um, I'm more, more focused on the combat system. I do have a few things about that, and then um, I'll just go ahead and edit this piece where I just go... Boy oh boy, I sure do love that black screen that you get every once in a while, because that's honestly the only the only real most recent bug issue problem thing that I've yeah, had. I can really benefit from it. Um, such a dingus move, honestly. There really isn't much of a point to feasting first year, just because it doesn't help. It it really doesn't help much. What happened? What? What happened to my screen? What? <laughs> wait, 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 what? Fucking population, serious? Oh god, I black screened. Fuck. Hang on. It is where, um, you know, you'll just be playing and then suddenly black screens. And, I mean, it's not terrible. It's not the, you know, it's not game breaking because you can just close the game, relaunch, reconnect, and you're good to go. It's just kind of, you know, it, it breaks the flow. And especially during an emergency like uh, an earthquake or winter or, or a blizzard, excuse me. Or you're getting attacked and you get black screened, and, you know, it's a problem. But, besides the point, uh, we have profiles now where people can, uh, you can, you can tell other people that you've played too much of this game, uh, where you'll get little badges and then you can work your way up to Yarl. So we have added a new profile section in the main menu where you find some statistics about the game you've played. These stats come with their obligatory Steam achievements, of course, so have fun unlocking them. Please note that we will only start recording your stats from this patch on, so previous victories will not appear. Your rank will also be shown in multiplayer mode, so you know if you're going into a match with other experienced players or not. While it's fun and dandy to, to have a, a ranking system, um, this really doesn't mean anything. And what I mean by this doesn't really mean anything, it's nice to, to know that your opponent has played at least 50 games of the Wolf, um, but if or if they've, they've won 50 games of the wolf, but if, you know, they've played 300 games and they've only won 50 of them, it, it's more of like a... It's more of like a you've put in so many hours into the game and you've just... You've gotten lucky to avoid, you know, that one dude that always leaves the game. You know, there's, 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 there's one thing that I think we can all agree on. That one guy that joins the game and then leaves, like, two minutes into the game... Fuck you. Just, just stop. Stop it, you know? Why? If if you're going to play a game, be honest with yourself. If you can only play three minutes of a 40, 30 to 45 minute game, you shouldn't be in the game, <laughs> you know? This, this, uh, it's just... This, uh, oh god, what's that game? This isn't, um... This isn't Agario. You, you can't just join in, die, and then leave, you know? This is, this is something that you really gotta sit down and kinda play. Uh, so... I do like that you have a little badge that, you know, you can work towards, and it gives you something to kind of, you know, work your way towards. Um, I don't know, this this feels more like unnecessary polish right now, where their time could be spent more on, you know, fixing uh, connectivity issues, fixing bugs, balancing out a few more things with uh, each of the clans. Apparently there's a rumored fourth clan that should be uh, expected to arrive somewhere near the end of July. Um, I don't know... 
the specifics. I just know I, I somewhere on the, the 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 Reddit page, you know, where all the cool, uh, cool the cool kids go. Um, some somewhere hiding in here, there was there was a, a dev that had mentioned there. They I don't know if it was confirmed or not, but they were definitely hinting at there that the fourth clan would be released at the end of July. Moving on though, we have the strategic map, which was something that they uh, hinted at, I believe, in the last uh, kind of dev update, where they, they were just like, find the differences, you know? Uh, so they've added a new set of buttons in the mini-map, which is actually, there's a lot more than just these guys, uh, there's quite a few. One allows you to toggle the display mode between resources, the default, and strategy, which will show all players visible warband units and defense towers. I Maybe it's just because I have every, had everything disabled because when you've got all of this, your icons, and then a bunch of images moving around, it's it really does turn into a whole lot of like clutter on a map on a mini map. You know, it's a mini map, not a map. So you only have you know this much space, and you're trying to fit 13 things on. You know this, the, like for example. So we have a town hall, a house, woodcutter's lodge, scout lodge, and probably a barracks. If each one of those has an icon on this one tile, plus there's a war chief on it, you really can't tell what's on this one tile. And I'm not saying that that's not, it's bad to have all this extra, you know, bonus information, but it becomes a lot of confusing information, a lot of conflicting information. Because if you see your weird war chief is on here, and your opponent's war chief is on here, and you really can't, and there's no real distinguishable difference between the two, obviously, you know, the giant red blinking light's gonna say, hey, this is the bad guy war chief, yes, but you know, two war chiefs on one tile, you might just think, oh, that's just my my ally war chief dealing with my aggressor, and you get confused, you know. I'm just just throwing that out there, just just you know, spitting some ideas. Fixed a bug that was preventing people from clicking buttons on the end of gameplay replay screen. Basic fix. Military bang. You can now toggle a rally point. This is nice. This is this is one that I know I've seen quite a few people um, uh, championing or supporting, which. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I, I like the idea of having your warchief being, you know, having your warchief as the set rally point. I would also like to maybe see an optional select the tile kind of. Um, All right, so victory. Oh, this is a big old one. All right, so victory progression. We put the fame score for other players slash AI back. However, now their victory progress will only start showing when they reach 75%. You can still view current progress through the victory progress screen. So it looks like they um, lowered the the fame score that you need to win the game for all all players and all AI. Uh, but then they also set the warning timer or the warning blinking thing at 75%. So you still have a little bit of time uh, to try and stop them. But typically speaking, if they're already at 75% and you haven't either killed them, stopped them, or on their on your way to kind of kill them anyways you've probably you're probably already pretty deep in the hole to try and you know s stop them from winning you can no longer see the icon of unmet clans on the victory progress screen eh, okay that's you know it's nice um it's just one of those one of those little ui changes you can now select your entire warband with a single click using the new button that has been added to the to your unit list that's nice um but i would like a hotkey I, it's just something I like having my mouse for example so say this is this is the you know north guard game I like to keep my mouse here because I can go here go here go here go here you know simple in the middle stuff if I'm dealing with a fight dealing with a fight and then I need to select all units while dealing with a fight over here that's just more you know, it's more unnecessary motions where I need to be more focused on the fight, especially with, again, how the combat system itself is is very, very um, fragile in, ter <laughs> Excuse me, in terms of, you know, who's going to win. A bunch of DirectX stuff basically saying there's graphics cards and stuff that they've worked on. I'm not going to go into it because I'm not much of a, uh, a tech guy. If there's someone in the comments that might want to say, hey, this is kind of what basically it's saying, would love that. Thank you. Received our first reports of someone cheating in game. Please keep in mind that Northgard is not using dedicated dedicated WAM, dedicated servers, uh, so we can't guarantee 100% cheating free experience. That being said, we have put in place some measures to prevent the most obvious ways of cheating. We hope this will be enough to discourage the cheaters, although, as you know, there's one in every crowd. I would say that I've run into more levers than there are cheaters, so 
maybe I just I keep getting lucky. Um, I've 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 never experienced this. If anything, I would love for there to be a way to discourage levers or disconnects or <laughs> people just joining in and then going AFK for 40 minutes, as you guys saw in my last game. I mean, the guy joined the game, played the game maybe stroked out on the keyboard i don't i don't really know he just kind of didn't play you know i would prefer yes it's it's absolutely important to work on anti-cheating i would also like for them to maybe look into discouraging people from just not doing anything i don't know you know you know what what shiro games can come up with because they they seem to know what they're doing um but I would really love for them to find some way to discourage people constantly leaving because anti-cheating, that's great. But the, even here, they say we're not using dedicated servers, so they can't guarantee 100% free cheating experience. Okay, you know, they, they put something in place, but the problem is they're always going to be playing a defensive game. You know, someone comes up with something new, then they have to react to that. And there's going to be that friction period of where the cheaters will have the upper hand until Northgard catches up. And then, uh, you know, and then it keeps doing this shimmy. Focus on, you know, focus on, on the more, at least in my opinion, the more pressing issues. If there's cheaters, okay, there's one in every crowd. Again, I've, I've played it, I've played uh, levers more often. AI improvements, we've started working more seriously on AI with the goal of having a very strong and challenging AI in hard mode. We only started a few days ago, but we'll keep you posted on how things are going. AI are getting reworked. Cool, that's, that's always nice. Gives, uh, gives people with no internet connection something to actually play. Other changes. We we made numerous other changes and little fixes. Here are some of the important ones. Prevent axe throwers and hunters from continuing to fire when a target is out of range. No more axes going across the entire tile. That's good. Um, that's good. I still think that axe throwers have uh, faster movement speed than uh, Vikings and shield bears. So it's nice that they have a range. Um, but if you're trying to get your war, your war chief to escape like five or six axe throwers on, you know, if, if your, your tile space, the safe zone is over here and your war chief is over here on the other end of the tile and he has to go like this, <laughs> he's not making it, you know? Um, I think what this is basically saying, um, it's, it's basically politely saying if your war chief is going to, uh, if you need to pull your war chief out, Pull him out earlier than later because if he's if, if he's only on like three percent health and he's on the other end of the tile, he's not gonna make it. He's gonna die to axe throwers just catching up and throwing crap at him. So you just you know, better safe than sorry. Fixed display on some global bonuses in attack slash defense if you are not not host in multiplayer. The bonus was previously correctly applied but not displayed properly. I don't know what this is really referencing to. Um, there could be. I think this is for during winter. Uh, at least that's that's my guesstimation. Is this is this is for uh, this is for the um, attacking through winter debuff. So there could be a whole bunch of things that that is. <clears throat> Added new dedicated skins to the buildings for the training axers and shield bearers. That's that's always good. Uh, it selected the other one, so we'll just go. I mean, this is basic cosmetic. It's it's nice. It's it's good to have. Fix bugs where sometimes you cannot place a fertile uh, field on fertile land. <laughs> Boy, that would suck. Sailors, the war production is back to 1 instead of 1.5. This is good. Um, I still feel like the, the Ravens kind of kind of got nerfed into oblivion uh, with not being able to basically go full D-Day um, on, on a opponent's you know home, uh, home tile. You kind of now have to send three 8 damage like mercs onto different, you know, each different shore, and at least in my opinion, what? No, I, oh my god, mom, I'm busy doing a video, gosh, <laughs> did you check the dehuve mana fair? Yes, I did yesterday, okay, did it overflow? No, <laughs> mom, please, I'm busy making videos, stop, <laughs> five bucks, she's gonna check back and go, okay, have a good day, sweetie, <laughs> my mom's the best. Circle of Stones lore bonus is now plus 30% and plus instead of plus 50%. Still better than a rune stone, so and you can place two of them. So I mean, 30 or 50, it, it 
I mean, all you, I mean, I can, basically what that's going to do is that's going to slow down those, you know, when you're playing with all the wing conditions and there's that one freaking goat on the other side of the map that's got a circle of stones and a rune stone, and you're on the far end of the map and you got to get through two wolves and a stag to kill the one guy, it's only going to make the lore rush a little bit slower, but you're still probably not going to make it. Um, this 30% is nice, but it's not going to, it's not going to prevent... It's not going to stop the issue. The issue right now is you have a goat on the far end of the map that has, you know, he's got two, he's got a circle, a circle of stones and two rune stones or something like that. And he just pure lucky spawn, all right? And he spawned in with that and he got the better spawn. And you, as a wolf, have a rune stone. And then like two tiles away, another rune stone. And then another two tiles away, a circle of stones. Pure RNG, it's just... You know, the this is nice because it'll slow down the goat, but if you've got to get through three people or two people or even just another guy, sometimes, you know, especially for newer players or scrubs like myself, that can be really difficult. And here I know the, here the on this chart, I, I think I found the, yeah, the thing I, I that, get that, that was you know, I was trying to find. Um, um, but if I have to fight through two or another person and then kill another guy who probably has an army as well. It's 2v1, you know, and especially in, in Northgard, this is a game of numbers, very much so. Um, if if the goat is protect is helping the stag who I'm trying to kill while the goat's getting the lore victory, I can't beat that, you know, that's just straight numbers. Amount of food traded to the giants join, you have, has, wait, whoa, hang on. Amount of food traded to the giants join, you has been reduced by 20%. Um, I think what this is trying to say in English is the amount of food traded to the giants. So um, the requirement for the giants to join the actual like relationship bar has been cut down by 20%. So you know if it was cost if it was um, if it was if it took 100 food to uh, recruit the giants, it now only takes 80 uh, instead of you know a full hundred. The uh, percent bar is still the same and everything, but now it's just a little bit easier, so you don't have to try and get to late, survive to late game to get Blaim, basically. Ship, build, ship building wisdom is now 30% instead of 50%. Again, uh, I think this is just to deter the Raven from going for the lore victory when he's already got the Circle of Stones. Um, because, you know, two, you got two or three uh, harbors going hard wisdom, plus the runestone, plus the circle of stones, there is no way that there is anything that's going to be able to stop that kid. He is going to get that lore victory easy. <laughs> Coinage is now 20% instead of 30%. Um, this, this entire section just feels nothing but a, a raven uh, nerf, basically. Gear, gear and upgrade and young and proud are now maxed at 25. So basically, uh, there's a bit of a, a stag debuff in here. But the rest of it's Raven. Uh, Young and Proud now replaces sharp weapons instead of defensive strategy, which is good. I'm glad to see that they uh, they got rid of defensive strategy and they just allow you to build towers regardless. Now that's that's a that was a really good choice. End of Nerf Fest, they say. <laughs> All right, so how is multiplayer? I thought I'd go over a few of the different uh, Reddit threads that kind of piqued my curiosity, just to see how the community is doing and just so. You know, uh, you guys can see how your feedback is being received. Exactly how you would expect, to be honest, obviously way more hectic and intense than late game, but it's just like playing versus AI. Multiplayer experience. The multiplayer experience can be viewed from a numbit of, numbit of angles. What is most important to you? If you want a lot of lobbies to choose from, you'll often find only two or three at a time. Early access, so no surprise. If you're looking for friendly opponents, there are plenty of those on scene. If you're looking for tryhards to compete against, many of them are happy to schedule a match or hop in on Discord. That is very true. There's a lot of good people in the Discord that are more than happy to uh, to kind of reach out and play a game, either tryhard or just you know casual. Of course, the uh, the 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 May Mays are popping up. <laughs> this is a pretty good one. <laughs> hey dog, <laughs> heard you like healers, so I got a healer to heal your healer. <laughs> got him. There we go. While I understand and like the narrative and gameplay reasons behind the boost to production, I feel it's too easy to abuse right now. I believe he's referring to uh, the feast option. Case in point, I was playing again, playing wolf against two friends, and I botched the third wi winter with a blizzard. Ended up losing half my citizens. The following boost meant that in four months, I was able to leave just a few civilians gathering resources, while my army went from a, 
a warrior and berserker to ten peeper, te people. Uh. Needless to say, I was able to steamroll the opposition who hadn't who hadn't almost lost and were struck with normal production rates. So, with the current system, a sound strategy might be actually might be to actually get on the verge of losing to make an unmatchable comeback. I think the system is good though, but maybe a uh, high slash long, but two, but maybe too high slash long, or maybe the fact that you have less people to cater to might be enough to get back on your feet. You did screw up after all. What do you guys think? Um, so in my, from what I think he's talking about is what happens when you go through a blizzard and you get a mass sickness, you also have mass, ca mass casualties because typically speaking, you only have one or two healers and they just can't heal 10 or 15 people. Uh, what this does in turn is you don't have to feed 10 or 15 people and your expected happiness goes up really high to basically it's the game's way of letting you bounce back. And um, I think what he, his strategy in, in his situation was, he decided that he was going to just go for straight all in. Now, this is actually a strategy. I think what he is um, describing is actually a, a strategy that a lot of uh, the, the more hardened, uh, salty tryhards try to do in 1v1s when they know that they have a close approximate spawn to their opponent. What they'll do is they'll get five or six of their villagers, turn them all into warriors, axe throwers, or shield bearers, <clears throat> get a berserker or a war chief, and then just straight dive onto their opponent. Their opponent, who is going for more of an economic, you know, long-term kind of game, doesn't have the units or resources to protect themselves, and so, because there's so many units like this guy's referencing, they just get overwhelmed. What he did, basically, I think by accident, was he counter it, he attacked, you know, he, he um... He went for an all-in strategy, and it just worked out. So, one of the things that you guys can kind of write down in your little notepads when you're trying to figure out how to how to clutch or kick, how to clutch that one, you know, that, that one goat clan that's across the map, and you got to get through a bunch of stags. If it works, go all in. The problem is, though, if he would have lost all of his units, he would be down on money. Yes, his happiness and food production would be, you know, very high because he doesn't have a very high ex. Uh, uh, general happiness or uh, food consumption, but he also doesn't have the units for a massive counterattack, which is quite often uh, the case when you're trying to attack and it fails. Um, and this is kind of a, a great uh, opportunity for me to kind of dive into, you know, the, the combat system, at least for now, of how this game kind of acts. I would say right now in Northgard, your, your armies are <clears throat> very expensive and very frail. And what, what I mean by that is, if you have four units attacking five or six units, so if you have three warriors and three axe throwers going against uh, a berserker war chief, or and then you know the mirror match of three units, three warriors, three axe throwers, and you decide to back off, that's basically the game right there. If you attack someone and you cannot get guaranteed damage, and and you decide to back off. You will either lose your tile, or you, the enemy team, because if it's a, if it's a one v one, you're okay because you got a little bit more wiggle room. But if it's an enemy team, you now have two full, almost full HP armies bearing down on your half to almost dead entire army. And one of the things that I've really noticed, and I really wish they would kind of do, was to actually bring back the healers' uh, healing factor. They're from 50% back to 100%. And my reasoning for that is because when a when an army, um, you know, gets to that low, there's no real chance for the uh, the loser to recuperate. Yes, they can, you know, lose two or three guys, and then they'll just, you know, sacrifice a farmer to become a, a, a warrior or a shield bearer or what have you. Um, but they just don't. It's it just it's not enough. You know, it's just not enough, and you just keep sacrificing guys to this giant army. Uh, there we go. Hey. I, I gone. I'm the guy with the, the microphone that always doesn't shut up. Um, all right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about for the military uh, was the. Well, I wanted to start off with the game is good. Let's let me just let me say this. So before all everyone goes, oh, he's just bitching again. I can say the game is good. Multiplayer is good. Everything is going quite well. These are the, just a few things that I thought I would um, mention to the devs because I think it's it is important to uh, bring up one of the one of the comments back I don't know in which which thread I had mentioned 
um, had said the game feels a lot like Warcraft 3, and I actually agree with that to a very to the point where I would almost say that this is like a Warcraft 3 game without the spells and Norse based. Um, the the army value is it's incredibly 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 um, important. You know, while it might be very easy to just you know uh, build another Viking. It's not. As weird as that sounds, and, and, and again, I know I understand. It's it's really hard to explain, but um, when if you go if you take a look, and I'll I'll, I'll link the guy. I, uh, I'll I'll link the guy who's he's a caster and he still does a bunch of casting stuff. But um, if you look at how the pro players handle their units, how they they micro their units, and how a lot of things, um, especially during the combat, are handled. You can see that the players are taking incredible care to keep their units alive. Three level one versus level three level one. We are going to engage mana burn there. Mana burn going back the other way. Whoever gets the first mana burns off generally wins as the demon hunter tries to get another mana burn there. All right. There you go. Are we going to see the mana burn go down? Yes. Onto the Naga Sea Witch. Now trying to pull back. Not enough mana to really burn there. Archer. Staff of Preservation. Beautifully saved as the creeps are now aggroed. All right. Demon hunter. Natural. Uh, Staff of Preservation once again as we are now trying to go down these units. All right. Wisp are coming in to do a bit of padding. And is it going to end up working? Yes, one archer does end up getting taken down. Demon Hunter does get a mana burn. A battle here may be taking place. Remind's wondering whether or not he wants to attack. 40 food count for him. Meanwhile, 44 for Infi. Shadow Strike being casted on that panda. And then uh, Infi's just going to pull back. He's got that one arcane tower to help him out and another guard tower being placed up. So at this point, Remind is going to try for a Personaries there, going to try to kill that Footman down. Um, I think Remind is trying to kill some time running around because he doesn't want those militia to be able to fight and just want them to revert back to being normal peasants. So both of them actually picked up some militiamen. We got the Mud Golem here to cast them slow. He also picked up a Troll Berserker, but the, the Mud Golem already went, goes down. Panda now decides uh, to TP out, so he's out now back in his expansion spot. So that buys Remind some time to regroup his army back together. And then me oh, Infi did. Infi just now started his text to Tier 2. Meanwhile, Remind is still only at tier one. Now the panda levels up to level four, just keeping at the expansion and trying to save it. I wonder. You can see that it's it's not just that it's one unit. It's the it's what that one unit can do. It's the the damage output. It's the micro. And I think what Shiro Games might really want to look into is having um, unit models with dedicated space around them. What I mean by that is, here's my hand. Here's my other hand. All right. When I go like this they stop because there's a hand in the way, right? As weird as a, a description as that sounds. Um, in Northguard though, when you have two units that try to clip through each, go through each other, they can go like this. They can physically just walk through each other sometimes and it really doesn't, um, it doesn't slow them down. And this is something that I think if they really want to make their combat system really better would be for them, for me as a player to A, see what's going on, and I'm gonna, again, I'm going to show a clip here, um, probably while this description is going on, of just trying to A, identify what's going on in the, in the fight, because a lot of times the units will get so clumped together, it's a mess. And I understand, you know, that's what combat is. I totally understand you know a war isn't isn't just a cut cut and dry sort of deal but you can still make it at least understandable you know this is so fucking confusing What, I, what I'm trying to get at is when you have all of this stuff going on, there needs to be certain things that you can still identify. And what I mean by that is when my war chief is low, okay, he's got this giant 
bar above his head. I know that that is the War Chief or Berserker's health. When I see a little sliver start getting small, and I see my axe thrower, my warrior, and then my opponent's shield bearer and two other axe throwers or uh, uh, warriors right next to them, I, obviously it's my guy. But I don't know which of my guys, and if I happen to, you know, if I'm trying to select on him, I might accidentally select my opponent's warrior, viking, whatever. <clears throat> what I'd really like to see is um, a little bit more, uh, more the ability to see the the combat system more fluently. So when two armies collide, I can go, okay, here's my warrior. He's low. I need to back him out. And when I was talking about the, you know, the hand motion thing and the units, uh, another thing that a, a, lo a lot of times really happens is you'll see um, when a unit is escaping, they'll basically just make a straight beeline for the closest tile that's safe. And a lot of times, you can't unit block that. So what I mean by that is, um, and I will again make another reference here to Warcraft 3, Oh my god, that's the best passive block of all time. Good game, didn't even try. When a hero in Warcraft 3 is trying to escape, well, a lot of times what you'll see is the opponent will put a unit in front of that hero trying to escape, which then allows, you know, the uh, guy that's trying to stop the hero, allow his units to try and catch up, maybe snare the hero, maybe kill the hero, when, it, you know, again, that hero is trying to escape. But what happens is, again, that unit stops the escape. Right now what happens is the the Berserker or War Chief will just clip through whatever unit happens to be in the way. Yeah, they'll kind of, you know, they'll get out of the way a little bit, but it's not enough to, to, to really do much, if you will. Um, and I think the, the simple fix with that is actually just to make the unit slightly larger. <gasps> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, one of the things that you'll notice in all of the StarCraft or Blizzard games is their units are always typically unrealistically larger than the unit or the building that they came out of. For example, um, the Huntress for the Elven, uh, for, for the Elves in Warcraft 3. There is no way a cat that big came out of a tree that small, if you know what I mean. Uh, there's no way a, a ballast day, you know, the catapult things from uh, Warcraft 3, there's no way that that thing came out of that thing. It's just too big. Um, same thing from the, for the Thor from StarCraft uh, 2. But what that does, though, is it allows units to be much easier to pick out of a fight. It's, oh, there's the, there's the ballast day, or, oh, or the catapult, excuse me. Oh, there's the Huntress. Oh, there's the, there's the Thor. You know, there's the Ultralisk, there's the, the big giant unit, and it even goes down to smaller units, you know, um, making, a, again, another reference to Warcraft 3 and sticking with the elves, the, the uh, hunters or the, the bow elven ladies, I'll probably call myself out on that, um, again, they're, they're big and they're easy to pick. They're easy to pick out in a fight, and even when a fight's going on, you can still figure out which is, you know, which is the wounded elf, which is the wounded unit that you need to back off. And that's all it really is. It's just a matter of getting the units larger so that their boxes are larger, and so it's easier for a player on either side to micro their units to the best of their abilities. Because a lot of times what happens is when a unit just needs to get out, they just get out, and then it's more a matter of did you time it right with your opponent's axe throwers so that your your uh, berserker or war chief lives? And you know, I, that's not really um, intense micro, if you will. That's that's more of did I do this to my best of my ability? Did I time it right? Basically, it's it's not so much you know did did I protect my my war chief well enough? Did I keep my units safe? Uh, but thank you to everyone that, that everyone that sat through all this. I know there was a whole bunch of stuff that I went over. Um, if you guys have anything that you really wanted me to check out, please do leave uh, the the Reddit thread in in the link below. A conversation, maybe even maybe even one of those sick May May jokes that all the cool kids are talking about these days. Um, 
Oh, 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 one more thing, one more thing. Um, dragons. Ha! <laughs> ah, dragons. So, uh, one of the things that I've always been kind of wanting to do a little section on is the uh, dragons, which are the non um, one tile win uh, option in the middle of the map. There are actually three of them now, from at least the rumors that I have heard. I have found one of them, and I know that there's another one because it's the it's the base, and then I've heard that there is a legendary third one that is the strongest of all the dragons. It is the uh, <clears throat> Dragon King. I believe the, the red one is the weakest at 1700 health with 50 damage. Um... And then I, I, I forget what the, the middle the middle base one is. Uh, I believe he's I want to say 2,500 with 50 damage. And then the I don't I I actually don't even know what the blue the most dangerous one how much health that guy has. But again, if you want to critique me, please do leave in the comments below. <laughs> Another plug in there for your kids. So talk to you guys later. Have a good day, got a good night, and I'll see you guys later. Like I said for the second time in a row. Bye bye.